Inside America's Boardrooms, the informational show for board members and corporate secretaries. Brought to you with Knowledge Partners, Diligent, PwC, Center for Audit Quality, the Conference Board, and Corporate Board Member. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodridge and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance. Welcome to this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. I'm TK Kerstetter, the CEO of Boardroom Resources and the co-founder and editor-at-large of Corporate Board Member Magazine. We're here in New York filming from the Conference Board Studios, and we have a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about what corporate boards should know about blockchain. And I know that makes a lot of people's eyes glass over a little bit, but we've got two people that are going to really help us put this in perspective. Um, to my immediate right, uh, let me introduce Barbara Berlin, who's the director with PwC's Governance Insight Center. And to her right is Grania McNamara, who's a principal with PwC's digital team. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you, TK. Great to be here. Okay, so we know this is, this is new wave stuff for a lot of the board members. They never had to deal with this. So we've got to start with describing what blockchain is in as simple English as possible. And Barb, I'll start with you. Well, thanks, TK. I'll do my best. Um, certainly, there's a lot of buzz around blockchain. And I think starting with a definition is the right place. So to try to do it in simple terms for our purposes here at a high level, blockchain is all transactions in a network. But there are three key components to that technology that make it quite powerful. The first is that it's a distributed ledger, which means that all participants to a network have real-time access to that ledger and simultaneous access. So all the data and information is not stored in just one place. It's stored across the network. The second component that makes the technology powerful is the fact that Participants who make a transaction with another person can do that directly. So they can confirm their transactions directly with one another, meaning that replaces the need to have a third party to verify or authorize a transaction. So you can see the cost and the efficiencies in doing that. The third piece of it is the cryptographic functionality to blockchain technology. And so what I mean by that is when a transaction happens, a block of data is created that block of data is encrypted. When a second transaction or a subsequent transaction happens, a new block of data is created. But that block of data contains information from the first block, and they are linked together, which is the chain that's created. So what you end up having is a permanent ledger of transactions that are considered to be tamper-proof. Because these blocks exist, you can't insert a new transaction or delete a transaction. So part of the blockchain is creating the integrity and the security of the information that's part of those transactions. And so you can see as you think about the power of that technology, how it can impact so many industries. We always think about financial services as being the leader, but many other industries are using or thinking about using blockchain technology for a variety of purposes. So that's a great segue because that leads into my question uh, for you, Grania, and that is where and how, yeah. now that we understand what it is, so where and how is it being used and sort of what can we expect going forward? What can a board member expect to be hearing more about? Yeah, absolutely. So, so let's think about the business value of actually applying this technology. So we're just seeing such a huge wide variety of use cases, but I would say they sort of fall into three categories. So the first category is really what I would call digital currency. Now some people will be very familiar with the Bitcoin use case. That is obviously a currency that is not backed by any government. Um, we do see people inventing, if you will, uh, new types of tokens and currencies that are, that are prevalent in these blockchain ecosystems in order to exchange value on a variety of different things. Um, so digital currency is quite prevalent. Um, digital identity is another area where we see a huge amount of innovation. And let me give you some examples of, of what that might look like. So let's think about a human being, a person. There are lots of facets and features to our identity. Some of it could be our qualifications. Uh, some of it could have to do with um, information that we need to, tra to, to transact on financial networks and so on. So what people are trying to do with blockchain is to say, 
how might I, first of all, provide uh, the ability to verify identity, in particular to those people who may, maybe don't have it today. So think about financial inclusion, think about humanitarian use cases of verifying identification of, of an individual, but then extend that into how does that individual show up in a medical context, in a financial context, in a legal context, and how might I uh, guarantee or substantiate or validate that the, what the person is asserting about themselves is actually true. So we see governments, we see medical institutions, we see academic universities, licensing and certification boards and so on coming into these blockchain networks to make that identity richer and to make it uh, verifiable uh, on these networks. The third area that we see a lot of activity is in what, what I'll call digital asset, and that's really principally around supply chain. So think about complex interactions between suppliers and customers and the expense, obviously, of managing through a, a web of supply chain. A lot of companies are working on making that a more digital experience, uh, bringing themselves closer to the suppliers and customers, and they're using blockchain to perfect a digital uh, asset, a digital version of that asset that's in the supply chain and track it. So it might be for food safety purposes, it might be to understand the geographic location of the asset, it might be to uh, service the asset, uh, you know, much more effectively than they can to do today and to really get a full view on the entire uh, history of that asset as it moves through the value chain. So it sounds like every day we're discovering a new use for yes. the technology, I guess. Yeah, no, that's absolutely the case. And you know, what's fascinating is at the beginning, of course, there was lots of hype and, and you know, people felt like this was a technology looking for a problem to solve. Um, it was a solution as, as opposed to you know, uh, sort of being a business of, of business value. Um, what we're finding is that actually a lot of companies are, are able to really think about accretive opportunities, you know, real use cases that will really add value to the bottom line uh, by using this technology to engage with other people that they're transacting with in, in their ecosystems. So that leads us to what we hope to always provide in these um, videos and shows, and that is what questions should board members be asking themselves and also be asking their management team? So Barb, I'll start with you on that one. So this is where we offer real value to a board member that's watching this. Well, I think the first question and where you start is what's the strategic use for a business use case of this technology and does it make sense for the company to think about using it? So I think always starting with the strategy and whether any business use case fits within the current strategy of the company is where you start the conversation. Looking into you know, where it can be used, what competitors are doing, and thinking about the question of you know, how do we disrupt ourselves and how do we stay current as these technology changes. So that's, that conversation is similar to other new technologies that the company might be looking at or thinking about implementing. Yeah, so I'll just add on to that. I mean, I think, I think that's great. Barbara covered sort of the what, what would I do with this technology? I think because it's a networking technology that allows people to collaborate around doing uh, things in a digital context, it's also really important to think about who. Who am I actually interacting with in these networks? Who are the partners that I'm actually going to choose uh, to, to sort of play with? It doesn't make any sense to build blockchains for myself. I need to be connected either to suppliers or customers or vendors or other people that are in the marketplace, so to speak. Um, and then sort of the other aspect of that is, of course, if I'm going to open up my internal system of control, so to speak, and connect into these networks, there's a risk associated to that. Um, and that risk comes in the form of cyber risk, third party risk, vendor risk, et cetera. And so again, really important to think through with management, although I want to be open and collaborative and innovative and I want to participate, I do need to protect the enterprise and I do need to think about how those risks get managed. So if you're a board member and you're hearing nothing about this from your management team, I guess the logical question is, are you guys um, researching and investigating this and its potential uses for our company. That's right. Similar to other new technologies, right. management should start that discussion or have that uh, look at that technology first as part of whether it fits with the strategy. Yeah. And then the board should be asking management about how have you thought about this? How does this align with our strategy? Yeah. Does it align with our strategy? Yes. So that's correct. TK. Same with AI and or any of those technologies, I assume. Correct. Yeah. So, um, where do if somebody wants more information, we've obviously touched on this. I know PwC has um, it's either working on or it's produced something. So, where would somebody get additional information on the uh, on the blockchain? 
Well, you're right, TK. We're just obviously touching the surface in this very short video. So there's a lot to the whole blockchain technology. But we did develop a paper called Board Byte about blockchain. And so that paper, along with all of the board level reports that we wrote about emerging technologies, are on our PWC Governance Insight Center website. Well, Agranya and Barbara, I want to thank you for taking the time. Hopefully we have um, narrowed this down so that somebody can at least have a, a, a working knowledge. Um, because again, as we both, as we all know, um, this is not something that most directors have had to deal with during their business careers. So right. something they're going to have to take the time to learn and it is going to be significant to their digital transformation of their company. So thank you for taking the time and that will conclude this edition of Inside America's Boardrooms. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again next week when we take another look at a critical topic that will help you be a better board member or committee member. So we'll see you then. Join us again next week for Inside America's Boardrooms. Brought to you with knowledge partners, Diligent, PWC, Center for Audit Quality, the Conference Board, and Corporate Board Members. Along with content contributors, Equilar, Meridian Compensation Partners, Wilson Sonsini Goodrich and Rosati, Donnelly Financial Solutions, and the Society for Corporate Governance.